Oh, hello there. Yes, anyway. Hi-ho. It's back to work we go. Yes. Not that we want to, of course. Us oppressed proletariats and all that stuff. Anyway, today, yes, I thought we'd talk uh, briefly about social movements. Um, there comes a time when uh, there is a tipping point into something new. Something new bubbles up, and it's always been bubbling around. You can always see it when you look in the rearview mirror. It's always there. And um, you think about those key moments in history when... Uh, for example, the, on International Women's Day, when the women at a particular armaments factory and um, in Russia decided they'd had enough of queuing so long for bread, which eventually led to, well, 70 years of the Communist Party in Russia. Or you could think perhaps of the very odd events in East Germany, which led to the Berlin Wall coming down. Just the wrong person saying the wrong thing at a particularly flashy time in a um, press conference. Or indeed Rosa Parks, you know... Um, it, there were people before Rosa Parks, and it was decided not to run with them. Rosa Parks got on a bus on the day that she did in <clears throat> in the South. And um, if no one had asked her to move, then she may never have gone into the history books. But such is the nature. We can always see these things in reverse. It takes a certain percentage of the population to uh, generally provide that tipping point. And nobody's quite sure whereabouts it is. Uh, a lot of early sociology was based on the idea of trying to predict revolutions. Still can't do it, because these things are always obvious, but from afterwards, leading us neatly to our current election, which is going to be a Peric victory, one way or another, I do believe. Um, anyway, oh yeah, I was drawn inevitably to Suella Brave Man and Peace in the Telegraph on Saturday. A vote for Starmer's Labour is a vote for national decline. Mm -hmm. And yes, I know it's going to be an irony-free zone. The party's far-left radicals are just as powerful as they were in Corbyn's era. Era, they must be stopped. Yes, well, thankfully they have been because, well, we'll come on to that. Anyway, it starts off like this. On the doorstep this week, I met Sue in her 50s and running her own small business. Her pebble dash semi reminded me of my childhood home. Yes, you see, paint a picture of what you would consider to be an archetypal Tory voter. A known floating voter, well, maybe not, but instinctively Tory, I ventured. Yeah, I bet that went down well. Anyway, but after I introduced myself to her as a Conservative candidate, yeah, because she wouldn't have recognised you. Anyway, and inquired how she might vote. She smiled and simply took her head, shook her head politely. Time for change. I'm sorry. Yes, it's a good job she was nice and polite, wasn't it, Suella? Because I imagine a lot of people aren't going to be very polite to you on the doorstep. Anyway, tempting though it might be to want change, in inverted commas, after 14 years, if that change means disaster, chaos and decline, I'll pass. For whilst Keir Starmie claims that he's changed the Labour Party, the truth is quite different. Yes, and she goes on to list all these dreadful things that the Labour Party might do if they get into power, none of which are in <laughs> any way... <laughs> <laughs> believable whatsoever unless you are some weird died in the wall Tory there are still a few out there and if you scroll down to the comments under uh, Suella's piece uh, it's quite intriguing to read the highest rated, one, rated ones because there are the inevitable I'm a member of the Conservative Party and have been since 1956 types who will post anything up in support of their gal the one who was going to stop the boats if you recall I was like bringing that one up about Suella but anyway my favourite other one very I think in the top five is this one James T Kirk I don't think that's his real name. I think that's actually William Shatner. But anyway, you, the Tories, have let two million in in the last three years. I no longer recognise my hometown. I despise you for what you have done. I will vote reform and damn the torpedoes. And there are a lot of comments under this piece on that basis. The Conservatives no longer have a natural constituency. They have blown it out of the water after 15 years, not just of incompetence, but actual corruption. They only have themselves to blame. And the Labour Party are following on a really 
brilliantly similar trajectory because in order to win power they do need to be more like the Tories except they've taken all those bits of the Tories that everybody hates and a case example this weekend was <laughs> Luke Akehurst being parachuted into a Durham constituency nobody wants him and it'll be intriguing to watch exactly what goes on locally so let's see this from a local party member Labour Party members, including a councillor, are exiting the North Durham CLP, meeting furious, some highlighting they weren't informed about Akehurst's candidacy until later on Thursday, and they'd found out via social media. Yeah, don't bother Labour Party HQ telling people anything. After all, you're the smart kiddies in London, aren't you? You're the ones in charge. The locals, the idiots, can just put up with it, can't they? Because you know better. You know so much better than everyone else, yes. They report they had three local candidates ready to run for a selection in this constituency. A lot of tension here regarding the imposition of a candidate. Yes, indeed. And I would say more power to their elbow. I think it's going to be hilarious watching Luke trying to get people to vote for him. I don't know how many people are going to go out canvassing for him. I can't think it's going to be very many, because if you want to hack off local activists, that's the best way of doing it. Not just imposing a candidate from above, but imposing a candidate who is incredibly divisive, who was very, very instrumental in bringing down Jeremy Corbyn, and is basically a paid agent of the Israeli state. And if you want to hack people off by God, I can't think of very many better candidates. Maybe maybe an ex-Tory MP who's notorious as a homophobe. That might also do it, that kind of thing. But it's astounding that the Labour Party think, as ever with these people, whenever they think they are in the ascendancy and they've won, they always manage to just simply blow themselves out of the water with their hubris. Hmm. Anyway, playing on all of their houses, I would still heartily recommend to people that they vote to get rid of the status quo. It would be nice to have a PR system. It's the most basic thing that we can bring in in this country to change things, because then we won't get lumbered with majority parties. It is likely this time around we will get lumbered with a majority Labour Party, but everything will unfold very very quickly because you can't run a country on nothing when it's being plundered by capitalism people in the bread crews eventually get hacked off and when there's enough of them they simply down tools and they bring a lot of people with them yes nice to be a subversive isn't it yeah quite like it anyway do have a lovely monday and do enjoy the weather ah my pussycat most definitely is yes